I just want to say like thank you. Um, I'm, I'm I'm reflecting back on 20 years of you being a mentor on my nightstand. Uh, I, I don't know if I've missed a book. Oh uh, wow! My my chiropractor when I was in Lubbock Christian University uh, handed me. He said, "Hey, you need to get wild at heart." And I guess it had just came out, uh, I mean, approximately within a, a few months. Um, and that has been an altering trajectory of my life and, and the struggle to, to figure out what a wholehearted man looks like and means. Yeah. Um, so thank you. Uh, oh, I mean, you're that, so welcome. That, that's, that's one of many things. I came to your boot camp in uh, 2012. Um, oh, right on. As, as I... As I tell many, uh, and I think my friend says it better than I do, uh, we learned how to pray. Uh, you, you taught us how to pray in that experience, uh, and that that that's worth the price of admission. Um, I've given out so many copies of Wild at Heart um, over and over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, just even the, in this last window of, of season that I'm currently in, uh, I've led guys in Wild at Heart last month. Uh, the month before that, they were in walking with God. Um, wow! And and, it, and it's and these guys these are guys are in their thirties, and it's their first time to encounter uh, the truth of Jesus that you, that the Holy Spirit has allowed you to present in a very relevant yeah, way. Right on. Uh, so thank you, thank you for it's your ministry. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You're very yeah. welcome, Lance. Thanks yeah. for those words. So, so I'm really intrigued and curious um just working with men serving in ministry doing executive coaching and of course there's always a context behind the question um but a lot of a lot of men roughly in their their 50s uh i'm experiencing um the empty nest um and all of a sudden it's like who's who's my wife uh either he decides to leave or she decides to leave um but I'm going to ask you to, to kind of speak there because I know a lot of a lot of men who listen to this podcast are 20s and 30s, relatively 40s. Um, but with that as the end goal of like, would you share with us like how you and Stacy are maintaining your love uh, in this season of life that you find yourself in? Yeah, beautiful question. <clears throat> well, you build into it, right? You don't just show up, you know in your 50s empty nest and, and go, hey, babe, <clears throat> I, you've either protected something or you're going to have to recover something. And it's worth recovering, by the way. Um, man, it is, I think when we were parenting, we made a very conscious decision, parenting young ones, because we are still parenting today. It's just helping them with their marriages and their young kids. And <clears throat> when we were parenting young kids, we made the decision that the children are not the center of our lives. Mm. And you have to be pretty conscious about that. Like Stace and I were together before they came and Stace and I are going to be together after they leave. Yeah. And we adore our kids, but um, decisions to take holidays, just the two of us, decisions to play together. It's really important to play together because then you kind of keep the lighter side and you're, mm -hmm. it's not just about the bill that didn't get paid or the kid that needs to get to school uh -huh. tonight or that kind of thing. You got to play together. Uh -huh. And I think if you make those choices, the kids are not the epicenter. The marriage is and that you've got some joy like mm. you travel together you goof off together you go out to dinner you, uh, just, you just play that that helps build, uh, in, build into uh, that uh, uh, i wonder if like some of that that play is missed i'll even speak from my own experience uh where you spend spend so much of your the decade of your 30s building something that you think is is a yeah. value yeah you need to um, but then, but, but then men that often arrive, you know, two decades later after they're, they're kind of getting to that legacy season of life, or, you know, if people want to research, uh, you're fathered by God material in the stages of, of a man, um, 
are they getting to that season of life and they they potentially are asking them the, the, the question of like is what i did enough is this what i was really aiming at hmm. um hmm. <clears throat> well there's dante right <clears throat> in the middle of the road of my life i awoke i awoke in a dark wood where the true way was wholly lost. Um, that was actually my story. I was about 35, so it's not 45, um, but I had really lost heart and I had really lost my way and I was successful, but in a job I didn't like. And, yeah. um, and I, I had to go back and pick up the journey of the heart. Where did I abandon the mm. journey of the heart? And I had to make some pretty bold moves. Like I, I quit a career track. I jumped tracks, went back to grad school, you know, became a therapist. Um, and I had three young boys. I mean, it was, it was a big risk, but we knew God was in it. And we, and we were, again, back to the marriage, we were united in it. I didn't just quit my job one day without telling Stace. Um, so there's that guy. And that guy, that guy needs to wake he needs to allow himself to experience his grief. Mm. I do not love my life. I'm not sure I love my wife. Mm. I don't know if I love God. And, and just to be honest about that and say somewhere along the way, I have lost heart mm. and, and I need to go get my heart back. <clears throat> but the, there's the other guy who has... Um, He's devoted himself to his family. He's devoted himself to middle management career stuff. He's yeah. just sl slogging away, putting in the hours. And, and he gets to 40, um, maybe, maybe to 45 and says, man, was this well spent? And that your life will be assessed by the quality of your love. Mm. If you loved people through those years, you are a hero. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and, but I would say to, to that guy who is wondering, both guys, <clears throat> you got to You got to ask God. You've got to invite God to speak into it. Yeah. And I, re I remember in those years asking God this very simple question. I just said, how am I doing? How am I doing God? Yeah. Like, I, I don't think I have perspective on this. Yeah. And to let your father speak into that. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. The, the intriguing part is, is grief, right? The, uh, I mean, we could talk about the last two years, almost respectively in terms of, of grief. Um, but, he, but even as you share your story, right at the age of 35, time for a change of direct, a trajectory, I was, I was 36. I had four girls all under the age of five. Holy cow. Uh, and I was, I was doing the executive leadership deal at a church and thought that was my, my route. Um. But what you what you picked up on, and what I don't want men to miss who are listening to this, or the women, is is acknowledging that grief, and and sitting with it, shapes the next season. Yeah, so, rather than running from it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you're going to run from a big part of your heart, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. and you're going to run from an opportunity to to encounter intimacy with god mm. uh, and plus what do you what are you running to what do you yeah. what do you what are you running to like it, <laughs> it isn't gonna work i'll guarantee you you know you just keep yeah. running i think you have to and i yeah it was <clears throat> so let me give you an example of that because i don't we didn't plan a podcast on grief but here we are um so as 2020 passed into 2021 so as we circled through the first year of the pandemic and the American elections and all that stuff. Um, 
a bunch of my pals were super stoked for the new year. They were doing the dream planner stuff and goal setting and, you know, kind of thing. Um, I couldn't do it. Mm. And I normally do something like that in the new year, but mine's a little bit more monastic. I, I ask God, you know, what's the year about? What are we doing together? Do you have some words for me over the year? What's what, give me my orientation? I couldn't do it. I couldn't. And, and Stace is talking about, you know, going to Scotland and I couldn't, I wasn't there. I just dreaming. I wasn't able to dream. And I realized it was grief. It was ungrieved grief. Mm. But I, what I first had to do was sit down. I literally sat down with a piece of paper one night and, and I just had to list the losses through the pandemic, through the first year of the pandemic and, and just name them and grieve them because there had been a number uh, large and small and my heart couldn't move on till I did that but once I did that and acknowledged the loss then yeah over a couple of weeks there was a shift and my heart was able to turn to the new year and, and to begin to to dream again so that's just the micro example of yeah. if you don't do that with your life um, you just don't operate with a whole heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then you go to the the next thing and the next thing, and you you wake up three years later and you're like, uh, oh, the wall hits you, right? You you, <laughs> you wake up and and wondering what's what's going on. Yeah, and you yeah. turn to your medication. Yeah, right? whatever that is. Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah, yeah. So, so for you, John, if I may ask a, a personal question. Um, just in, in light of a couple of, couple of questions, but like, what agreements have you found yourself making lately? Like in this season of life, uh, especially as we kind of turn this corner of grief, um, what, what's going on with your heart in terms of uh, possible agreements that you've noticed yourself? So in, in, there's kind of a nomenclature within the wild at heart ministry world and for us we use the term agreements as yeah. ne as negative things there are positive yeah. agreements yeah. Um, but we tend to when, when we're talking about making agreements it's usually stuff that the enemy's throwing at you yeah. like you suck it's over she doesn't love you stuff like that yeah. Yeah. and and you make agreements with it and then you come under the cloud of it right and it, yeah. and it, it actually ends up feeling true Oh. because you've given agreement to it is that what you mean by way of agreement or are you referring more to what am i dreaming about what am i thinking about what well no just the the tension of that cloud that, that like yes the, oh, the, yes. the, the, the thing that the, the thing that we all struggle with but sometimes fail to acknowledge mm -hmm. actually what's going on mm -hmm. yep yeah oh yeah um <clears throat> okay so i'm 61 okay um and I can feel the subtle agreement that um, you're kind of a has-been. Mm. And things are really winding down. Mm. Now, now, the thing is, there's actually not a lot of data to confirm that in my life. I love my work. Uh -huh. I love my team. I, you know, but your heart comes under these things, right? Uh -huh. We have an accuser. And he brings this stuff along. Um, yeah, I think things like that, um, kind of in the in the framework of things are winding down, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and those, the, if I'm under that cloud, oh man, uh, what I start doing is pulling away, yeah. right? You pull away from relationships. You pull away from dreams. You pull away from projects. Uh, okay, so I just finished a new book. Uh, it doesn't come out till next summer, but I didn't want to write this book. And I kept asking Jesus, please let me get out of this contract. Like, let me call my publisher, <laughs> tell him I'm really sorry, you know. And, and Jesus kept saying, um, it, no. <laughs> No, it's going to be okay. You're because um, I didn't have a lot in the tank, right? We mm -hmm. all we've all just come through global trauma, yeah. 
and we are clobbered from the pandemic. And then, and then everybody rushed out this summer to try and binge on joy and get to restaurants and get to ball games and travel. And you, know, you couldn't get a rental car oh. in the world. You couldn't oh. get an Airbnb or a VRBO. Like it, it was nuts. The world was binging to try and care for its grief and the trauma. It didn't work. Oh. Um, and, and I, it wasn't working for me because I, I was aware of what was going on. So I just had an empty tank. I'm like, I'm empty. I don't want to write this book. Jesus says, no, no, hang in there. Uh, I'm with you. It's going to be fine. And after I got some rest, you know, get out of the ministry cycle and all that, get into summer, get some joy, get to the mountains, get on the rivers. I was better. And I, and I wrote the book and I'm really glad I did. <clears throat> so it's an example of please let Jesus into your interpretation of your <laughs> life. Uh, like let it let him into the interpretation. Ask him what he thinks. Yeah. 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 Well, so so practice. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Just uh, you know the the truth and lies. Uh, I lead a lot of guys through just the the basics of trying to discern you know, the lies, the, the agreements that we've made and, and trying to understand what is true about you? What is true about what your father is saying over you? Uh, and it's, and it's very difficult, but, but I think the hard thing is that the lies are so, so real and so present, but it's even more difficult to, to allow people to open up their heart for Jesus to lead them and minister to them. So, so how do you, how do you, nurture and guide that place what encouragement do you have for men and women um, to allow jesus to shepherd and lead their heart as yeah. they as, as they come under uh, <clears throat> a, a new truth yeah so you realize that's like a one-year question <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> but here's some things we've learned um first off let your desire for life compel you. In all the things we're talking about, we're talking about chasing wholeheartedness. Ultimately, yeah. we're chasing life. We, yeah. um, <clears throat> and so in the moment, you're like, oh man, I don't even want to go there with God. But the goal is life yeah. and freedom. You go, okay, all right, I'll do the hard work in order to get to the joy. It's worth yeah. it. Every, yeah. every single time it's worth it. So that's a piece of it. Um, some of you are actually going to need to forgive Jesus yeah. before you give him access, before you can give him access to your heart. Yeah. Uh, there are disappointments. There are things that felt like betrayals. And, and theologically, I know, I know, Jesus doesn't need our forgiveness. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is your heart is holding some things against him. And you're not going to give him more access until you forgive him. Uh, and, and that's been a really huge breakthrough for a lot of people in healing prayers. First, uh, you know, Jesus saying, I'm really sorry for the home that you grew up in. I'm really sorry that you lost your wife. I'm really sorry that you, you know, your career has not turned out the way you want. And whoa, that can be huge to realize that God's on your side mm -hmm. in this, that he, he shares your grief, your sorrow. So forgiving Jesus. And <clears throat> I think um, another key part of this is you've really got to get rid of the religious Jesus. Mm. He is in the way, oh. you know, the guy who's pale and oily hair and children <laughs> and lambs around him. And he's always got the white robe on and the sandals, creepy Jesus, oh. right? Like that's who wants to open their heart to creepy Jesus. Oh. You, you're, you have to go to the things that you love. You go, oh, I love the ocean, or oh, I love, I love cycling, or oh, I love music. You go, yeah, that's Jesus. Yeah. 
he is in the things you love. You go, oh, whoa, I can open my heart up to mm -hmm. that God, yeah. right? And so I think yeah. it's those three things would be some, mm -hmm. some places that remove obstacles. Yeah, that's, that's powerful. There's many thoughts and questions. So I'm going to try to just slow down just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, because just especially just on that last piece, just I was thinking of conversation three days ago uh, of how how we just should on ourselves as as Christians, like, well, my my religious God time is is the morning for whatever unforeseen reason that that's been placed upon us and our shoulders. Uh, and and I was trying to express just this idea, like, like Jesus is in this relationship, and so. Like I, I love, I love working out, getting in my garage, turning on the music. And it, it's just, that's where I meet Jesus, right? Yeah. Uh, the daily prayer podcast, what, like whatever, like God is leading me in, in that moment is what I do, yep. but in it, and it filters the rest of the day. Uh, and this morning won't go into all this, but um, my girls, uh, they just finished a Spartan race with me uh, two weeks ago. And, and one of my daughters says, Hey dad, you did not train us enough. And so they're meeting me out in the gym and, and we're finding this kindred spirit and this, this courage ah. and this confidence together. Uh, we have a scripture meditation and thought for the day. Uh, and it's the same one for the week for them. Um, and today it was just so fun. Uh, like in the, at the end, at 10 minutes, I was like, Hey, on the count of three, we're just say, we love you, Jesus. Right. It's just like, like allow God to delight in his presence and wherever you're at and the beauty yes. of it. Yeah. Um, but you bring up several, several parts of, you know, I'm thinking about moving mountains when you talk about inner healing and some mm -hmm. inner prayer, mm -hmm. um, the religious, religious osity uh, of Jesus and, and the beautiful outlaw, like you shape me in, in deep ways, understanding John 21 and like, the campfire scene of Jesus delighting and sitting mm -hmm. with his disciples and, and breaking bread and eating fish. Like he's ever present to us. Um, so, so thank you for that. Um, and those resources that have helped so many. Mm -hmm. along it's the way. so important. It's yeah. so important. Yeah. He's, he's the least religious person you will ever meet. Mm. He's the most deeply spiritual but he's the least religious guy you'll ever meet. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if that's, and, and I've been in ministry for over 17 years and I, I do executive executive coaching and leadership now for men on the side as well. But, but that's really real. Like the burden and the demand of, of ministry and the programs and mm -hmm. uh, the cloud that many pastors and ministry leaders are facing. Um, I don't have a question around that, but it's just really true. Uh, well, it's yeah. the hardest job in the world. So let's mm -hmm. just be honest about that. <clears throat> yeah. if you're going to be in local church ministry. Holy cow, man. Yeah. Because you're just in the trenches and you've got everybody's frustrations and everybody's demands and there's no possible way you can meet it. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's research that shows that the people who are in professional ministry spend the least amount of time with God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and they don't mean to, it's not like they're intentionally doing that. Yeah. It, it's that God work things that have God language, God activity around them. Oh, we've got a service to do. We've got a conference. We've got childcare, you know, mm. feels like time with God, yeah. but it's not, it's not the same thing. You know, you're on mission, you're serving, you're engaged, you got work to do. Um, so I, yeah, massive empathy for anyone who is in local church ministry and, and they are going to have to be valiant mm -hmm. to fight for their hearts because yeah. that environment just, it just kills the heart. I've been there, yeah. I've done that. I've worked in yeah. that environment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you, uh, you already mentioned it and I had it down as a, as a note to reference, but can you share more about your current project? Like what you're working on and what you just finished and specifically, um, maybe the helpful part I heard in a, in one of your podcasts, I guess here recently, um, about just creating short-term goals, short-term wins in terms of, of resiliency. Yes. Um, 
So we got a little bit of peek behind that. So I don't know if you could share a little bit more peek behind the book and what, sure. what's, go, what's going on. Yep. Yep. So um, last night, Stace and I are setting the table for dinner. And she says, honey, can, can you get me a glass of water too? Because I had done mine. I did get hers. I'm like, sure, babe. So go to the cupboard, go to the fridge, fill in the water, walk over. And I set it down at my place next to my water. <laughs> and then I, she's looking at me going, honey, <laughs> I look down, I've got two glasses of water sitting in my thing. That's um, trauma. That's mm. the, the mental fragmentation of trauma. We have all passed through global trauma. Yeah. And, and some of us have been more clobbered by it than others. But I'm just here to tell you folks, like, you have been through trauma. And the little forgetfulness and the mental fragmentation and you pick up your phone and you don't know who you're going to text that stuff <laughs> that's all symptomatic of it the rage that we see the anxiety that we see that's all symptomatic of it so what i'm concerned is this i that we need to take our resilience much more seriously um be, because there's a phenomenon now. So you've heard about the great resignation, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Four to five million uh, people are yeah. quitting their jobs every month. Now, I'm just here to tell you, four to five million people are not suddenly <laughs> discovering the dreams of their life. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. They're not suddenly breaking forth into a whole new level of happiness. That's not no. what's going on. Okay. They're hammered and they're done. And just that idea of I'm done. Um, people are doing it in marriages and ministry. I'm just that phrase. I'm done. I'm so done with this. Okay. So that's our souls have been through global trauma and the effect is the great, you know, tapping out. And sadly, many, many people are doing it with God. <clears throat> They're tapping out on their faith and just mm -hmm. saying, I'm just yeah. kind of done with the whole God mm -hmm. thing, you know, yeah. famous worship leaders. Like it's, this thing is global. Okay. So therefore, since we care about the life of the heart and we care about the human soul, let's, let's take our resilience seriously and with, and with care. God, what do you have for me in terms of resilience? And so that's what the new book is about. And, it, and it's a series of steps, prayers, some guidance into recovery of resilience but it's not in the spirit of hey okay suck it up everybody let's go double down right come on everybody like no that's not resilience not a scripture sees that um there is a supernatural resilience that is imparted to us through jesus christ as he dwells within us talking about the strength of god mm. and and so what you were tapping into on that particular podcast, we were talking about mental resilience and kind of getting a hold of your thought life. And, and you can do that in a couple of ways. You start with speculation. Speculation burns like a staggering amount of emotional energy. Why didn't she text me back? <laughs> she didn't like me anymore. You know, like, how come I didn't get invited to that meeting? Oh no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm on the verge of losing my job. Just, all that stuff, those, right? Those false narratives. <laughs> oh my God, we all do it. We all do it. Speculation, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. you, you got a headache and you're like, oh no, I think I have brain cancer. Yeah. You're like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, slow down. Catch yeah. your speculations, catch your speculations and, and just yeah. choose, I'm not going to indulge in that. And then you were talking about the truth lie thing. Mm -hmm. I, I would recommend a, a little declaration that you do every day. Uh, I, I am a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I'm deeply loved. I'm completely safe. Things like that. The things yeah. that you know, you just got to say that stuff out loud, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. For, for yeah. mental resilience. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing, you want, you want mental resilience, folks? Get off the news. Yeah. I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, get off the news. Yeah. Yeah. You know, five minutes a day max like get in find out the basics like you know is there a fire in near your, your community did the governor change the you know the vaccine protocols or whatever yeah. I mean, get get the basics and then get out of that stuff because yeah. 
um, it's actually kind of traumatizing to be bombarded with a daily dose of bad news. It's very rarely good news, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so there are simple things you can do like that to take back your mental resilience. Mm -hmm. And and that's just that's like one sort of sneak peek into. And let me give you another one because it's so it's so basic. So, um, <clears throat> the river of life mm -hmm. flows from God through the city of God. Ezekiel sees it flowing out of the temple. John sees it flowing down the city of the New Jerusalem. But Jesus in John seven says, "Well, actually, the river of life is meant to flow through you." your actual being is the life of God in, in such abundance and, and ever flowing that it's pictured as a river. And that's meant to flow through our inmost being, it's meant to flow through your heart. And so to go, wait, what? Like, I would love to tap into that. I didn't know that was available. To, to ask God to pray that the river of life that your abundant life, Lord, your saturating, life-giving resilience would flow through my being today. Mm. Give me the river of life. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, interesting enough, I've worked on a word for 2022 already, uh, and, it, and so it's abundance, uh, just, just seeking that presence of God. And um, yeah, it's, it's so good. Uh, when will the book be out? June. Okay, so it's going to be a few more months. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, here's a cool thing if your folks haven't tapped into this. Uh, so we have a free app that we built uh, right before the pandemic. It's called the One uh, Minute Pause. Yeah. You can get on the App Store, iPhone, Android, the One Minute Pause. Uh, and uh, it is so life-giving and uh, such a simple practice. Twice a day, it prompts you and then you get the screen where there's beauty and there's music. And then I'm guiding you through a very simple prayer yeah. of giving everything back to God and receiving his love. Yeah. And it's such a beautiful story, Lance, because we're not an app company. We don't build stuff like that. <laughs> um, but God really moved us to do this. Yeah. And it came out right before the pandemic. Yeah. Right, right on and time. And yeah. oh, suddenly the whole world found itself locked yeah. at home and people's anxiety and depression went through the roof, you know, yeah. domestic violence, alcohol, substance abuse, it all went through the roof. Yeah. But hundreds of thousands of people have downloaded this free app and we yeah. get all these stories of you, you saved my life. This simple yeah. app saved my life. So that's when people can go get today. You can go yeah. get that. Yeah, and yeah, and there's yeah. there's several pauses in there. One of them's called the mental strength pause. I love that pause. Oh, it's so good. Uh, three days ago, I had a friend. He was just some things are going on, medical stuff, and doctor's office, and high anxiety, right? Um, and I so I just offered him, hey, do you do you want to hop on the phone for like a ten minute centering prayer time? Uh, he couldn't do it, uh, so I have the pause. One minute pause on my phone. I said, hey grab some time. Like this will be a lifesaver for you. Today. Yes. Yes. Uh, so it has been a huge blessing. Thank you all for yeah, spending beautiful. the, spending the money to make that happen. So was, <laughs> that's an investment. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah. but, but God used it and it's been beautiful. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So when you, I, I don't know if I've really heard, uh, any, any podcasts I've listened to you with, will you share maybe just a little bit of your writing process? Like how do I mean, I know the war of art, like we know all the hacks, tips, you know, but uh, like, what's your process? Like what, what's unique to you? Mm -hmm. um, well, you got to start with, I, I only write what I'm interested in. I don't write what I think is commercially viable or, you know, going to fill a market niche or that sort of mm. thing. You got to, you got to write with what you're inter interested in, you know? I do. Um, and, and then there's a threefold process for me. There's kind of the um, hunting and gathering stage. And I'll just start reading and listening and because um, I'm curious, because I'm interested in it. So 
and I have a notebook, a uh, simple journal, and I'll just take notes. Somebody will say something in a conversation and go, ooh, that's really good. That's, and I'll just write that down. Um, and I kind of go through a phase, months long, sometimes it's six months long, sometimes longer, where I'm just gathering and nurturing the ideas and reading other people's thoughts on them. Um, but particularly because I'm a therapist, you know, I'm listening to people. I'm listening to the movements of the human heart. And then stage two <clears throat> is where I'll kind of map it out. I'll give myself and because we're on Zoom, you can see this large bulletin board, yeah. you know, behind me. And I'll just uh, notes all over a board. I'll literally okay. visualize it um, until it makes sense. Where are the big ideas? What's the flow of this? So phase two, I'll create a structure for it. And I get a lot of joy out of each of these phases. And that's just crucial. You got to just yeah. love, you got to love what, what you're process. doing. Yeah. 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 Um, in other words, folks, you don't sit down at a computer and start writing. <laughs> like it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> That's brutal. Uh, you gotta, you gotta like nurture it and and fill your soul with it and be curious about it and and then kind of map it out. Give yourself a, a map to follow, and then I'll start writing. But even then, I don't start chapter one, page one. I I write on what I'm interested in currently. So uh, gotcha. you know, yeah. So for example, I think that. Um, abundance, if you come back to your word for a moment, abundance, the assurance of abundance is one of the chapters in the new book. Mm. And it's based around you, you either learn or you do not the assurance of abundance from your mother. That's mm. that that's the primary that's that's what the soul learns mother, you know, through nurture, nursing attachment, that's she's your first attachment, mm. all that. You either learn or don't that there is the assurance of abundance. And, and so you can't just like go to God and go, oh, I believe you, you're so abundant. Like your soul has convictions about yeah. these things. Okay. Well, I'm curious about that. Mm -hmm. So I was reading on it, you know, and, and so I would start writing that chapter and it's like chapter six in the book. So I don't write in a chronological order to begin with. I write on what I'm interested in. And then you know, you kind of, I'm in phase three now, the writing phase, write in what you're interested in, only write till you're tired and then stop writing every day. Don't write past you're tired. Uh, and I don't think people can write for more than two hours, actually. Yeah. I mean, maybe like the superhero, but uh, your soul just can't do that. You can't like whip it. Don't whip your soul in the project. Uh, you know, you back away, you go do something else, you answer emails, you take the dogs for a walk, you know. Yeah. Oh, that, that's good. That's helpful. Super helpful. Uh, in, in that, and just kind of turning a corner to close over the next uh, few minutes together. Like we talked about grief early on, trauma, those things. And, and I hear yourself like you just celebrated a pretty significant, another milestone, another accomplishment of finishing the book, the labor, mm -hmm. the labor yeah. of love doing that. And I share all the time about like this process of of it's healthy to celebrate. It's healthy. Yes. It's healthy to take pride in, in what God has allowed you to produce and the stewardship of that process. But going back to no matter what stage you're in, right? Um, we just keep going, just keep going, just keep going. Like, like how do how does John take a moment to pause to celebrate? And it may not be celebration town until June, but but how do you celebrate and what would be helpful for people to consider uh, in that? Oh, no, man. I've already celebrated. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Getting that book off my shoulders. That was huge. Uh, we went out to dinner. We busted out a bottle of wine. We, uh, we had joy. We're like, come on, stop, celebrate. Uh, uh, we do it a lot. Uh, we turn on loud music in the house and we dance. Uh, we, um, yeah, we, we take a weekend away. Yeah, it was our 38th anniversary last month. And so we went away, we uh, went to a nice yeah. hotel, had a nice dinner. Yeah, you got to celebrate. And again, it's funny because what we're asking, I'm listening to what's behind our conversation of why, why do human beings need to be helped with these things? 
<laughs> and and I think part of it, Lance, is that we we don't really want life. We choose something else instead, comfort, safety, security. I don't know, like, like, do I celebrate? Are you kidding me? Like, I want life. This is all about life. I want, I want God, I want joy, I want wholeheartedness. Like if you're chasing that, uh. then, then some of these practices are gonna be pretty, pretty natural to you. Uh. They're just gonna come, right? Well, then I, I wonder too that sometimes our, our celebration is just another mask that we're wearing, right? It's the next Netflix that we're going to binge on and that's our celebration, but really that's not a new rhythm or a new habit for us. It's, it's just what we do. And so we, we fake ourselves into thinking we celebrated when it's just like, no, I am just medicated because that, that yeah. celebration wasn't able to receive the joy of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Joy. I was just thinking of joy. Yeah. So it might be helpful to ask yourself, uh, where's my joy? Mm. How, how's my joy these days? And then, uh, and we, we just did a podcast on this as well. Ask God for his joy. Ask him to impart his joy to you. Like just let him give you his heart, his joy. You might be really surprised what happens. You, you actually might find yourself a more joyful person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've had that. I've had somebody ask me that question just the last two weeks. Like, man, I, I don't know where my joy is at. Every, yeah. every, everything's amazing in life, but I have no sense of joy. Yeah. 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 Ask God to give you his joy. Yeah. That's good. That's helpful. So uh, just a selfish question here. Uh, since I'm championhope.com, that's just kind of my, my sense of identity and in the interwebs. Um, but it comes out of this, this position of Romans chapter five, three through five, that, you know, we grow through that suffering. We grow through that endurance. We grow through that perseverance. Mm -hmm. And it forms this character and that character leads us to hope and that hope does not disappoint. And that hope, you know, continues to lead us to Jesus and the fullness uh, that he's done for our behalf. Could I get your perspective on, on the play of words and of, of champion? Like what is a champion to you? Um, and then I know you've done some, some deep work around hope, so we wouldn't have complete time to go in that, but Specifically, I'm trying to reclaim that that this position in our culture that hope is passive, but hope is a very active ingredient in our life. Mm -hmm. So could you help structure and frame and just talk into kind of what you're hearing there? Right. Because again, we've all been through global trauma. And one of the effects, one of the cumulative effects of a series of chronic disappointments. Oh, the kids' football game was canceled. Oh, graduation was canceled. Oh, can't go see our folks. Oh, can't, well, you can't even hold a wedding. You can't, you know, just chronic disappointment. Yeah. You lose your capacity for hope. And mm -hmm. so it's something that has to be actively cultivated again. Mm -hmm. And, and listen to your heart. Your heart will tell you. Uh, what would you love to hope in? What would you love to hope for? Um, so I do think it's something that in our own souls, champion hope, what I hear in that is almost on behalf of others, on behalf of others, champion hope. Be, be an advocate be a relentless advocate of hope for other people, but you can't really do that if you're hopeless. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so you're going to have to be a relentless advocate of hope in your own life. Mm -hmm. And again, this isn't bullying, this isn't soul um, you know, aerobics. This is to say, if I do not have hope, why? Do I not have hope? Yeah. Where did I lose hope? You start chasing the trail of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and 
you know, I was listening to you quote Romans 5. And what I was struck by is, you know, perseverance, you know, leads to proven character, da, 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 and then that produces hope. And I, my reaction was not for everybody. So what's the difference? Why, why is Paul convinced? And, and I would say, oh, it's for those who want God. Mm. The, God rigged the world so that it will not work without him. Even things like hope. Like you can't, there's no, there's no psychological process that will sustain your hope through this world. It just isn't. Life's, life's brutal. Yeah, and your pets die, your friends move away. You know, it's just stuff happens and it breaks your heart. And, and so I, I'm, I'm convinced as I'm thinking about Romans 5 now that that promise that our present sufferings are actually producing resilience in us and a resilient hope mm. and a resilient joy. I wanna say only for those that want God, yeah. only for those for whom God is becoming more and more the treasure of their life. Yeah. Because then you're tapping into, whoa, you're tapping into the whole kingdom of God and all of its mm. resources. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then those things become true. Yeah. Then those things become true. Like one of, one of the most life-changing things in the world, friends, is to love God in your suffering. In the suffering, you love him. Because suffering makes the human heart shut down and it makes us pull away from God. Yeah. And, and you've got to be a champion <laughs> for your hope by not letting it do that. You can't let it do that. You, you, and the, you begin by loving God in your suffering because it opens your soul back up to the presence of God who then can meet you and carry you and counsel you and heal you in your suffering. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of earlier, you're just being authentic with jesus you know, he he can handle yes what's going on with your heart yes um uh, and i was just kind of reflecting back on i guess it's been four or five years ago now age 36 um uh, just yelling at god uh right but but that that suffering and even thinking of your own story that the age 35 changing right and, and the mm -hmm. men and women listen to this the willingness to embrace that suffering knowing that there's a better story on the other side and to keep walking through the wilderness yeah it's it sucks it's hard yeah um but it's also hard like divorce is hard like eating healthy is hard like life is hard like so right so as you've probably seen those memes like choose your heart yeah and, it, and yeah. it's worth and it's worth it to pursue this kingdom yes of, of abundance yes one leads to life yeah. one yeah. type of hard leads to life and joy and the other type of hard just leads to more hard yeah yeah, yeah. john i want to say uh, from the deepest place in my heart like thank you um, at mm -hmm. age of 61 i just pray that God will continue to give you many years um, for the difference that you're making uh, all across the globe. I mean, I know uh, your reach is very large. I pray that he'll protect you um, with integrity you. and wholeheartedness Amen. Um, in, in this season and that he'll fill you up. Thank so, you. And just thank you so much for your time. Um, now, I just want to ask and, and close, would you... Uh, lead us in, in a prayer for everybody that's made it this far yeah. in the podcast and yeah. um, bless them as well. Yes, let's do. Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I want my whole heart back. To sit with that, Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I want my whole heart back. And I invite you in 
to the recovery and the shepherding of my heart, yes. of my hope, of my joy, of my grief. I crave intimacy with you. Come, be the advocate of my soul. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you. Amen.